A lot of you will know my Border Terrier Hazel. Well, a couple of days ago, Hazel looked like this. What caused this was a type of gastric dilation called bloat. And what I'm going to ask you to do is share this video with as many people as possible so if their dog does experience what Hazel had to go through then they'll know exactly what to do and hopefully it can save some dogs lives. Last Sunday Hazel found a rawhide treat in her toy box um, and she hadn't actually touched it since Christmas she decided that for some reason she wanted to eat it probably because all her friends were around so she thought I'm gonna eat it before anyone else does and I just let her uh, I saw her eating it and I let her eat it. I've heard a lot of stories about rawhide, about dogs choking on them. I decided to sit right next to her, make sure she was eating it in small bits so she didn't choke. Even though I was keeping an eye on her and trying to stop her from choking, she actually did start choking on this tiny bit of rawhide. I freaked out when I was screaming at my parents trying to get them down and they came down and we were trying to get it out of well, what we thought was stuck in her throat, which we were trying to get it out of her throat. And we phoned the vets. After a couple of minutes of trying to reach what we thought was in her throat, we rushed her straight to the vets. When we got to the vets, we still thought she was choking, so she was given a sedative to knock her out so we could see and trying to clear her airways. And when she was given the sedative, she stopped breathing. She stopped breathing for just under half an hour, and we were trying to work out, um, us and the vet, we were trying to work out what had happened to her. And the vets wasn't actually meant to be open that day, so there weren't any um, vet nurses around, so my mum and I had to actually do the work of a vet nurse. So while Hazel wasn't breathing, and the vet was trying to work out what had happened to her, um, my mum had to give her chest compressions, and I had to squeeze this balloon thing, which was attached to a pipe, which was going down into her lungs, uh, to keep her well, to keep her body oxygenated because she wasn't breathing at all. All the time she still had a strong heartbeat but it was it was the most horrible thing seeing her there not breathing and we we thought that we had lost her. We we were we didn't want to say it, my mum and I, but we looked at each other and we thought that she had died and we were crying a lot while we were trying to um give her the oxygen. And when we were doing this, my mum said, look at her stomach, it's, it's really massive. And, and it was, it, it was huge. So our friend, the vet, um, did an x-ray of her stomach and this is what she saw. Right, so the black bit is actually her stomach and you can see it's absolutely massive, it's huge. And the reason for this is because Hazel had something called bloat. I had heard of bloat before, but for reasons I'll explain later, I never thought that it would happen to any of my dogs. So when the vet explained that her, her massive stomach um, indicated that she did have bloat, I, I was actually, I was just, I was terrified. It's the second biggest killer of all dogs, and even if a dog is treated, there's still a, up to a 40% chance that the dog will die from it. What bloat is, is when the stomach dilates and becomes massive inside the dog and then it starts to twist and that cuts off the blood supply going to the heart and it sends dogs into shock and it's usually the shock that will kill them and if the shock doesn't kill them the blood supply to the heart will eventually be shut off completely and the dog will die from a heart attack. Imagine this sweet is the dog's stomach and it keeps twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting. So all of these gases, or perhaps food, have nowhere to go, meaning the dog's stomach will actually have to expand. It's, it's really not nice. Once we knew that Hazel had bloat, the vet put a tube into her stomach to remove any fluids and gases that had begun to... Um, build up in there and cause the stomach to grow so massive. Once we had kind of deflated her stomach a bit, she seemed a lot 
better. Her, her stomach wasn't so massive anyway. We x-rayed it again and this will look like afterwards. The size of the stomach is probably half, if not a quarter of the size it was before. And even afterwards in this x-ray, her stomach was still bigger than normal. So that just shows how serious it was to start off with. After this, Hazel was given a few injections to try and start her breathing again. And um, eventually she did start breathing, even though it took a while. Even once she had come out of the deep sleep that she had been put into, she was still struggling to breathe. And when she took that first breath, we were so, so relieved. Even though we weren't out of the woods, it was just incredible to see her take that first breath because this dog five minutes before we thought there's no way we can get her out of this. If not treated, bloat can be deadly to your dog. And even if the bloat doesn't kill your dog, often the shock, which is a result of the bloat, does. The number of dog owners that don't even know about bloat is huge. And there are also a large number of dog owners who have heard of bloat, but they didn't think in a million years that it could affect their dog. That's how I was. Because I had heard that bloat only affects large dogs, dogs that are very deep chested, or dogs that had run around a lot before or after eating. Well Hazel is not a big dog, she's not particularly deep chested, and she had done no exercise that morning, she hadn't even been fed, she'd had one raw hide chew, and she didn't even finish that one. So she didn't have any of these things, really, yet she suffered from bloat and nearly died. So all dog owners need to be able to recognise the signs of bloat and be able to take their dog to the vet straight away. Make sure that you have a vet that you can trust and even if you're going away with your dog make sure you can source the nearest vet. A dog doesn't know when it's going to have a bloat episode. It could happen at night, it could happen when you're on holiday, it can happen at any time so you need to be prepared for this. The symptoms of bloat that Hazel showed were gagging and trying to be sick unsuccessfully, which we mistook for choking, trying unsuccessfully to go to the toilet, a massively bloated stomach, which if tapped sounds a bit like a drum, instability, she couldn't get comfortable, she was very restless and she seemed quite wobbly on her feet. She was panting a lot, she was very restless and she was licking the air, she was kind of tongue flicking the air like a snake would. She was also salivating a lot, there was saliva dripping around her mouth. Her gums were so red that it looked like they were bleeding and her tongue was starting to go blue. There are other symptoms as well which is the roached up body shape, excessive drinking, accelerated heartbeat and collapsing. But your dog may not show all of these symptoms, but if your dog shows any of these symptoms, take them straight to the vets. The longer you wait, the less chance your dog has of survival. So it's absolutely paramount that you get them to the vets as soon as you see the symptoms. I can't say for sure if it was the rawhide that caused the bloat, because I don't know. However, we have thrown away all rawhide in our household and it's completely banned from now on in our house. But that's not to say that it did cause it. Four days on, Hazel has to take five tablets a day, but other than that, I mean, she, she looks absolutely fine. If I had slept through this week and then woken up today, I would not have seen any difference in her, I don't think. She really, she doesn't seem that different at all. A couple of days after, she was still feeling a bit drowsy and she was still a bit incontinent because of the anaesthetic, but right now, she just seems completely back to normal. We are limiting the amount of exercise she's allowed to get. She's getting smaller meals, but more frequently. And she's not allowed kibble with high fat content or with a lot of citric acid in. Thankfully, Hazel is recovering, but it was this close. She'd never shown any signs of bloat before, and it came on so quickly. One second she was fine, the next second she was struggling for breath, and ten minutes later, she had stopped breathing completely. But this is why it's so important to share this video so more owners can recognise the symptoms and get to the vet on time.